Welcome to the Odds Breakers, your number one place for shared, sharp betting information. Hell no, till the no, 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 hell till the no, hell till the no, till the no, 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 hell no, no, till the no, no, hell till the no, no, till the no, 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 to the no, no, to the no, 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 I think we know what Seattle Seahawks betters are saying right now. Unreal. Welcome back to Podcast 72 of 2020. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can follow me on Twitter at OBKiev. Follow us at The Odds Breakers and follow us on social media slash The Odds Breakers. This episode is being brought to you by jazzsports.ag for a 80% sign up bonus. Please visit Jazz Sports and use the promo code OddsBreakers. Terms and conditions apply. If you'd like to help us out with our costs and sponsor the website and the podcast, we'd love to help you out. Please visit theoddsbreakers.com, click shop, and become a member. For $24.99 a month, you can get my plays and premium plays before the line moves. If nothing else, please visit theoddsbreakers.com and become a free picks newsletter subscriber. Hell to the no, my friends. Although, had a good weekend of football. Hell to the yes. Eight and four and one in college since Friday. And NFL was six and five. Had a great Sunday at six and three, but we are 0 and two, unfortunately, for Thanksgiving. College basketball is ramping up. We made some plays. Lost some plays. I'm uh, unfortunately two and five so far. Bad start for college basketball, but there's so many games and so many plays. I'm completely confident that's going to turn around as usual. You know, college basketball is going to be a little hit and miss with COVID. So far, it's off to a fine start, though. Had a lot of line value on some of our plays, but obviously, sometimes it just doesn't happen for you. That Gonzaga-Kansas game is one we definitely hit, though, and that was a fun game to watch. They scored about 200 points that game. And, uh, I mean, Gonzaga is just a force so hard to stop inside. And uh, I think Kansas is going to get better. But um, I I believe what we saw in that matchup was two top five teams. Uh, At the end of the season, you're going to see them in the top five no matter what. So uh, that was a fun game to watch and I'm just super excited about college basketball in general. I already have a Big 10 preview all ready for you and I'm going to have that recorded maybe next episode. We might even have 3 episodes this week for the Big 10 preview. I haven't decided that yet. It's going to be a really long podcast on Wednesday, Thursday if uh if I include that. So, uh going to figure that out later, but what's important right now is recapping some of the craziness that happened over the weekend. And uh got to tell you, Northwestern, you know, they really had themselves a nice setup this weekend, but did the letdown spot let down? Hell no, to the no, no, no. Actually let down for us because I didn't bet it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't. I don't know why. I, this is the one you, I kicked myself for Michigan State plus 13 and a half. The money line was probably like plus 380 on that baby. I mean, that one had odds breakers written all over it, and I didn't do it because of all the shit that I've talked about Mel Tucker. And yeah, he was terrible on the Bears. He was terrible on the Jaguars. Not that good with. Uh, with Colorado last year, but at the same time, he's he's uh, exceeded my expectations a little bit. So apologies to Mel Tucker, um, and uh, he's all, I, I just thought that you know, yes, Northwestern's in the perfect letdown spot. Yes, they're overrated. Yes, that was a misleading score in penalties against Wisconsin. Very misleading. If you watch the game, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But either way. We still had a good weekend of college football betting. Our big ones came through. Really could have used that Hawaii-Nevada total at the very end. We just missed it. Nevada just kept playing slow when they were getting beat. Some some stupid uh, 
decisions on their part. But uh, there's a lot of craziness going on in the college football because now Ohio State's getting all these games canceled and they might only have five wins. And unfortunately for the Big Ten and Buckeye fans, do you guys think that the committee is going to let a team that played five games in the college football playoff? Hell no. To the no, no, no. No. Probably not. And that sucks for the Big Ten. And it just shows how incompetent Kevin Warren was throughout this whole process. You know, starting late and having the max 21 day rule. He he set the Big Ten up for complete failure. I'm not even sure if he was smart enough to even know this. You know, I've I've been a huge critic of his since this has happened. And uh, now you're seeing what kind of leadership the Big Ten really have. They're more interested in politics than they are in actually having good football. But anyways, I think that Clemson, Alabama, and for sure Ohio State are the top three teams. I think Notre Dame has really, really made a good case, and I upped them in my power ratings. But, um, you know, those are your four best teams anyway. And uh, the weird thing for the college football committee is if they don't have Ohio State in it with five wins, I mean, people are going to be screaming, for one. And for two, is there going to be kind of an asterisk there with Ohio State not making it and everybody had them pre-ranked number one in their power ratings? (laughs) That's another bad look for college football just in general. You know, this season, if anything, has taught us that the NCAA itself has absolutely no power over what the conferences do. The NCAA is just a word. You know, they don't really govern anything. You know, I I, I have no idea what kind of money they're making just for being the NCAA or, or what they, how they're involved they are in the sport. I thought they were involved more NCAA football, but they're really not. They're not at all. I suppose that they formulate and force rules <laughs> in the sports, but uh, you know, there's really nothing that they do to enforce anything that's gone correctly or gone wrong within the differences of how these conferences see things, of how they see when they should start football, how they're going to have makeup games or not. You know, Big Ten says no. Other conferences say yes. You know, it's just all over the board. So it's just proven to me that the mission statement of the NCAA is absolute bullshit, absolute and utter bullshit. So what a mess of a college football year. And, uh, you know, the kids, yeah, there's been plenty of COVID cases around and you've seen games get postponed and stuff, but nobody's getting that sick. And, uh, you know, right now the kids are paying for it because they have deadlines, especially in the Big Ten and the Pac-12. So, um, you know, I, there's no way I can see a, a Pac-12 team making it. And I would be shocked if they put in a five-win Big Ten team like Ohio State over a Florida team that has two losses if they lose to Alabama in a shootout in a close-ass game. Or if they put in Texas A&M, who's looking to finish this their easy schedule with only one loss, but yet they play ten games. There's I I just don't see that happening. So, unfortunately, for the Big Ten, they may not be making it due to the incompetence of Kevin Warren. So, um, that's all I wanted to say about that. But uh, either way, there's some great games to bet on this weekend, and we will have our free play for you. Getting into a little NFL, you know. I mean, Kansas City was Kansas City. They let they 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 were nice enough to let Tampa Bay come back and cover the spread. I mean, for some people, some people took the three. There was a three and a half out there, but I mean, Kansas City they they can just step on the gas at any point they want. I had to up them in my power ranks. Tampa Bay has been losing losing a lot of games lately, and you can tell that Tom Brady has lost something there he is it just has not been accurate or he's not throwing the ball deep 
for some reason. He can't do it. Um, he did a little bit in the second half when the Chiefs loosened up their defense, but I mean, that's not the Tom Brady that I know. He's, he looks a little bit flustered there. So I found that interesting. A couple of upsets. The 49ers beat the Rams. Kind of screwed up our refuse to lose teaser there. I think we gave out the Cleveland and Green Bay teaser this weekend to make up for the that to our premium members. But uh, the Rams, I don't, they're just such a strange team. I think they're just super coached. I think Tim McVay is just a, uh, a super coach that is, is worth like a couple points at least to the power rating himself, you know, just himself. He elevates that team. He elevates Jared Goff's plays. His playbook is great. He knows when to call what plays to beat the defenses. It's not that just that they're that great on offense. It's not that Jared Goff's that great. The guys he throws to has somehow pop wide open. It's all McVay there. But same time, the 49ers and Shanahan. Shanahan's probably the best top. top I, I am third behind Andy Reid and John Harbaugh right now. You know, third. That dude it can coach, man. So um, that's what you saw there. Him taking a bunch of scrap for what he has and making a team that went to L.A. and beat the Rams. That was very impressive. You know what's funny about uh, Cleveland? I saw a couple tweets about how that roughing call when they sacked Glennon. And, of course, uh, the Bengals got one of those fake calls, too. You look at it, it's just like, wait, that's a normal, just nice tackle. They're actually nice, brought them down nicely, and they call roughing the passer, which completely screwed up the spread to any Giants betters or Cleveland betters. The NFL owes the Giants betters and Cleveland betters money for what they did that game, just calling a fake penalty. And it's just so crazy out there that um, I was worried because I had Cleveland down to minus one in the teaser. And thank God the Jacksonville didn't get that two point conversion to tie it up because you don't know what the hell is going to happen after that. But uh, you know, I was that made me a little bit nervous. And uh, the NFL is just so sloppy this year. Um, you know, a lot of people are pretty pissed off about it, and you can see that on Twitter. Some really incompet- incompetence, I should say, happened, of course, every week when you have guys like Anthony Lynn. You know, when you have guys like Adam Gase, they both literally within about five minutes each other made the same stupid boneheaded call. Boneheaded. (laughs) They were down 10 points, which is two scores, on the 20 to 30-yard line plus territory, the opponent's 20 to 30-yard line, and went for it on fourth down when they just needed a field goal anyways. You needed a field goal anyway to tie it. And they freaking go for it and blow it. Man, it's it's crazy. I mean, how can Adam Gase and Anthony Lynn become a coach when degenerate sports bettors like all of you know when to kick the field goal? Know when to make it a one-score game, and they don't. They go for it on fourth down, completely oblivious of how football works. How is that? How do they become coaches and we're not? What the hell is going on here? Oh man, I have no idea what's going on. I mean, seriously, how does that happen? I think it's to be an NFL coach, you have to just be at the right place at the right time. You don't have to have any knowledge of football whatsoever to be in some of these organizations, really. You don't. Because maybe the owners don't understand football. And you can see that in the Chicago Bears. I mean, they have, they're have clueless on how the game actually works, right? But when you have people that don't understand football, hire people, they don't have no way of telling if the person they hire really understands football or if he's just a, one of those dumbass assistant coaches. You know, Matt Patricia finally got fired this week. Right, finally got fired. But we found out that he literally has no clue how to run a defense, and it was all Bill Belichick. He was just sitting there collecting money. The, the Patriots do great because of Belichick, and he gets a head coaching job. <laughs> you know, that's how easy it is for some of these people. Same thing with Chuck Pagano. Chuck Pagano 
was on the Ravens during the 2000s when the Ravens were kicking ass on defense. It was all John Harbaugh, but then the Colts hired him, and they have the worst defense in the league for years. And then the Bears hire Chuck Pagano as a defensive coordinator. Oh, man. I have no idea what's going on. I mean, seriously. <laughs> it's amazing to me how bad these organizations are to hire these coaches. But at the same time, if you look at the whole NFL in general, it's kind of a shit show with bad rules. But, you know, I found it really funny watching that uh, Denver game a little bit. Funny and sad. I mean, how do they have to play a game with no quarterback, yet Baltimore gets all these postponements, you know? Why is the rules different for them than it is for Baltimore? Is it because Baltimore is a playoff team? I mean, can you, you want to just come out and say it, that you're just making up your own rules at the same time? I thought that was a very bad look for the NFL as well, you know? And it just kind of shows a little bit of the incompetence of what's going on in the NFL. I mean, the best thing that can possibly happen is that they actually hire a commissioner that cares about the integrity of the game. But I don't see that happening for a while because with fantasy football and sports gambling, Roger Goodell is getting all that credit for that. All that, you know, when fantasy football started getting big in the 2000s, that was really the push. You know, women have fantasy leagues in their offices. You know, men that really didn't watch football start watching it because of it. You know, Roger Goodell's getting all that credit, and it was just really computers that made fantasy football possible or more possible and easy to calculate scores, you know. So <laughs> it's just amazing to me how somebody can get the credit when they're, when they're not deserved. Roger Goodell is the Matt Patricia of commissioners. Come on, don't bullshit me. But anyways, it was a... Good week for us sports betting in the NFL because our big plays hit being six and five. Had a little bit of help from Carolina's defense scoring a couple touchdowns at the beginning of the third quarter, but you know, you feel like you're on the other side of that coin more often than not. The Jets, I made a very small play on them and lost. And uh three points they scored with Adam Gase there. Looking at the Jets schedule, do you guys think that uh they actually have a shot? of winning a game this year. Hell no, to the no, no, no. Cardinals versus Patriots was a interesting game at the end. Another big personal foul that kind of changed the outcome there. But uh, you, can, you can watch that one for yourself. But I got to tell you, the Cardinals at 6-5, and five, the fact that the Rams lost that game and they also beat the 49ers, Six and five, you got the Rams at seven and four. They are in it this uh, for this division, and we got the Cardinals at eight fifty to plus eight fifty, so eight point five to one. It was either that or nine to one. I got to recheck, but whatever to win the NFC West. So I'm really rooting for the Cardinals this year. And uh, one of the biggest, craziest games was the Raiders. The Falcons have Julio Jones out. The Falcons have Todd Gurley out. The Raiders coming in there. The spread goes up to three juiced. They score six points, five turnovers, and the Falcons score 43. That was the most lopsided score that's happened this weekend. You know, so that was absolutely crazy watching that. The Raiders are definitely better than that. So I'm curious to see uh, where their their spread's going to kind of end up landing for their next game coming up versus the Jets. All right, my friends, let's get into a little college football week 13 misleading final scores. And we'll go right to Nebraska versus Iowa. Nebraska outgained Iowa 338 to 332, 322, yet lost 26 to 20. A two to one turnover ratio hurt, especially on that last drive that they had. South Florida outgained UCF, believe it or not. 646 to 577 yet lost 58 to 46 a 2 to 1 turnover ratio hurt them but they covered like a champ and uh that spread was like 24 25 points so they covered by a lot cal outgained stanford 392 to 300 yet lost 24 to 23 a 2 to 0 turnover ratio did them in and missing the freaking extra point at the end of that game uh, we were on Cal plus one. Got to thank, thank goodness for the push. At that point, 
I was just like, I'll take the freaking push. Just miss the extra point they did. So it was one of those that just Cal kind of looked incompetent. Didn't play that much this year. Texas Tech outgained Oklahoma State 639 to 539, yet lost 50 to 44. Turnovers were equal at three, but bad red zone efficiency uh, hurt the Red Raiders. Indiana only outgained Maryland 349 to 300, yet lost 27 to 11. Three to one turnover ratio. And uh, Michael Penix Jr., quarterback for Indiana, out for the season with a leg injury. And that's why you saw that Wisconsin spread shoot past 14. Wow. Buffalo only outgained Kent State 663 to 578 at 170 to 41. A 1 to 0 turnover ratio and horrible Kent State run D is what did this. Arkansas State outgained South Alabama 494 to 486, yet lost 38 to 31. They won the turnover battle 0 to 1 as well. So that was an interesting one. Louisville. Outgained Boston College 493 to 425, yet lost 34 to 27. A three to one turnover ratio did there, did them in. Surprised? <laughs> well, if you remember, we gave out Boston, Co- yeah, Boston College is our free play, and uh, I mean, we actually bet Louisville would have turnovers because their numbers were better than Boston College. Normally, that doesn't work out. They've just been doing it so consistently that. You know, you can kind of expect it. Texas A and M and LSU were even at two hundred sixty seven yards, yet Texas A and M one twenty to seven, three to zero turnover ratio hurt LSU. Let's move on to college football week 14 motivational spots, letdown spots, quite a few. Iowa State at West Virginia after winning at Texas. That one would definitely hurt. They can still get in um if a couple things work out for them, like uh I think they just need Texas to beat Kansas State and Kansas, I believe. And uh, then they get in over Oklahoma State. But that's a really interesting one. Oregon State at Utah after beating rival Oregon is a big one. Oregon State beat Oregon last week. Holy cow. Hawaii at San Jose State after beating Nevada outright to let down spot. Michigan State isn't a letdown spot because it's Ohio State, but they did beat Northwestern and were big dogs, as we talked about before. Ball State at Central Michigan after beating Toledo is a letdown spot. Get-up spots. Ohio State needs to convince the committee versus Michigan State. That's a get-up spot. Wisconsin needs a good win versus Indiana at home. Liberty at Coastal Carolina is a huge game and a get-up for both teams. Just want to mention that. Liberty's literally playing Coastal Carolina. Can't wait to see that game. West Virginia can play the spoiler at Iowa State, so that's a get-up spot for West Virginia. And it's not like um, Iowa State would be out of it, but still, it's a big game for West Virginia. LSU hosting Alabama is a big one for them. Huge one for LSU. I mean... (laughs) I mean, it's been sucking this year. Look ahead spots. Florida looking past Tennessee to LSU is possible. Very possible uh, look ahead spot. Tulsa looking past Navy to Cincinnati is a possible, well, a definite look ahead spot. (laughs) Hard to bet on Navy, but uh, I might have to get to the window on that one at some point. Let's get into a little NFL Week 12 misleading final scores and Week 13 motivational spots. Detroit outgained Houston 388 to 384, yet lost 41 to 25, a three to one turnover ratio, and just horrible coaching did them in. Bye bye, Matt Patricia. Atlanta outgained Las Vegas 304 to 243, yet won 43 to 6. Yards per play were equal at 4.2, but a five to one turnover ratio destroyed Vegas. L.A. Chargers outgained Buffalo 367-332, yet lost 27-17. to They won the turnover battle at 1-3, to too. <laughs> Only one turnover. But uh, some of those yards were uh, desperation, Hail Mary at the end. Probably should point that out. But still, win the turnover battle like that. It's crazy to lose. Uh, New York Giants outgained the Bengals 386-155, to yet only won 19-17. to <laughs> That's a pretty low score for those yards. They also won the turnover battle uh, one to three. 
So you would have thought they destroyed this team. Horrible officiating kept the Bengals in. Arizona outgained New England 298 to 179, yet lost 20 to 17. They won the turnover battle at 2 to 1, yet bad efficiency and bad personal foul on Simmons at the end did them in. New Orleans beat Denver 31 to 3, but Denver didn't have a quarterback this game. Not a real one anyway due to COVID protocols. Chicago versus Green Bay was a lot of garbage yards, so nothing misleading there. <laughs> just wanted to point that out. Chicago had a decent amount of yards, but it was all when they were just getting their butts kicked. Letdown spots. San Francisco hosting Buffalo after beating L.A. is a letdown spot. Tennessee hosting Cleveland is a small letdown spot after they beat the Colts and got revenge. Washington could let down versus the Steelers after that big Cowboys win. But they have a shot at uh, winning the division now, so uh, I'm not going to necessarily buy into that one. They also have, uh, obviously, 10 days to repair. Get up spots, everyone at this point. This is the NFL. Um, it, it's crunch time here. Look ahead spots. Dolphins looking past the Bengals to the Chiefs as possible for a look ahead spot. And uh, the Bills could be looking past the 49ers to the Steelers. So with these look-ahead spots, I'm not like excited and running to the window to be betting the Bills or to be betting the Dolphins here just because they really could be looking ahead and, and uh, not cover those big spreads. Well, especially uh, as far as the, the Dolphins, they, they're going to have a pretty big, probably 9.5 to 11.5 point spread, I would guess. I think I think that's what it should be at. All right, let's move on to our college football week 14 free play. And we're going to go right with Oklahoma State minus one, one and a half, whatever it is, all the way up to three. I like that play. Two star premium shared. Oklahoma State, believe it or not, is still in this thing. And the reason they are is because they have two big 12 losses, one to Oklahoma, one to Texas. Yet, they still can get in if Oklahoma loses. So that should be a big motivational spot because Oklahoma's got to play West Virginia. And West Virginia's a tough game, and I think they got to play Baylor, right? Baylor, they should be, but you never know. This is football, right? So they're definitely motivated here to play uh, TCU. So my power rings have them about a two-point uh, winner here. Nothing huge. But I think the motivation should be on Oklahoma State side to uh, have that shot at making the Big tw- uh, the Big Twelve championship there, right? Uh, TCU is not that great of a team. They have a net zero yards per play. They allow about five point six on defense. Because I mean, same with Oklahoma State, they're a net zero yards per play, but their defense is better. So I like to lean defense in this scenario. I think that Oklahoma State has had a harder schedule. You know, they had to go to Oklahoma. You know, that's pretty important. TCU got Oklahoma at home. The non-conference was a little bit stronger for, well, actually, TCU didn't even have a non-conference. Oklahoma State had to play Tulsa, and, you know, Tulsa's a pretty good team. They're a ranked team, undefeated in the American Athletic Conference as of right now, beat UCF. So uh, they had a little bit of a tougher schedule, and it's just a better spot for uh, Oklahoma State here. They have a shot to win this thing and get into the Big 12 title game. So I'm going to go with Oklahoma State with the short favorite here at minus one, uh, minus one and a half. I like it two, minus three. At minus three, it's kind of more, eh, try to get it below that if you can. Give it two-star premium shared play. You're going to need a bigger boat. All right, now it's time to get into a little fantasy football with our guy, D. Nasty. All right, now it's time for a little fantasy football action. Week 13, actually, Dave. And this is the week before most playoffs happen in any normal league anyway. So it's a big week for a lot of people. It's make or break, isn't it? Do or die this week, baby. You got to win this week to get into the playoffs for some people. So definitely make sure you got your good guys in there and set your lineups this week. Yeah, yeah. And the cupboard is bare out there, I'll tell you. So, uh, I mean, if you haven't picked up somebody by now that we recommended or (laughs) or at least Dave recommended, uh, you know, it could be pretty tough. But, uh, you know, I mean, what's funny, I think fantasy, it's great to have a, a, a great draft from the start. And a lot of times it turns out lucky. 
Um, but on the other side of it, I think it's really one just picking up players throughout the year, isn't it, Dave? I think it's half and half. You got to have a little, it's a little luck too mixed in there as well. It's all about who you play each week and matchups too. You could play another team that has a high scoring week and you could have the second high scoring week and still have a great team and still lose. So, uh, matchups play a big role. And then you do have to have a, have a solid draft though. That definitely is the core of your team. Uh, but pickups are very important too. That's how you make or break and win your season. Very true. And all these waivers that we go up, um, through every week it's not like we're picking a good team doesn't have to pick these guys up they're not going to sacrifice somebody better for this these are these are mostly for desperate teams or somebody with an injury like if you are a good team and you needed a guy for an injury once in a while um it's important for you but you know these are for teams that are kind of um trying to fix their year in the most uh, part but there's some injuries out there that people are going to have to replace and there's some matchup differences here too this week so i'm excited to go over it why don't you go ahead and uh, talk about the bye weeks, Dave? Sounds good. We have two two teams on bye this week. Uh, actually, both teams have quite a few fantasy relevant players that you will have to bench this week. Tampa Bay Buccaneers is the first one on bye. Uh, they have Tom Brady, of course, who you'll have to bench, and they have the trio of wide receivers there too, and Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown. Uh, so you definitely want to get them on the bench. I don't think you're starting any tight ends from that team. Uh, but definitely Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette, too, at running back. So quite a few fantasy players there that, that you have to be aware of for this week. Who's starting uh, Who's starting Chris Godwin, though, Dave? Weren't you high on him at the beginning, by the way? Oh, he had almost 100 yards this past week. If you look <laughs> at the stats this past week, five catches for like 98 yards. Well, he must have made your waiver wire then, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding you. No, Godwin's definitely a big disappointment. I think uh, there's this one league that Dave and I are in, and everybody rips on Godwin because somebody like made a bet, and it's really funny to watch. But uh, Godwin is, uh, is, uh, has been a bust for the most part. But he actually had a decent game in a lot of garbage time this week. So that was interesting. He did, yeah. So he's definitely been a disappointment this week, but he's had a few solid games in a row now. I wouldn't say great games in a row, but definitely solid. Uh, better than bottom of the barrel guy you could pick up off a of waiver. So definitely a guy you can still keep on your team and start on, on a bye week uh, when you do have those. But this is the last bye week. So uh, then the other team is the Panthers. So uh, Run CMC should be back next week. Uh, unfortunately, he still is out with injury. Uh, they're saying after the bye, he should return, which is great news for all the fantasy owners, especially for the playoffs. I have him in one of my big money leagues, so I'm hoping he comes back for the playoffs in week 14, which would be awesome if he does. Uh, and then a couple of receivers there, too, Robbie Anderson, or Rodney Anderson, and then we got DJ Moore. And then Curtis Samuel, actually, who's been playing very well as of late, too. And then uh, Teddy Bridgewater and then Mike Davis, who's been filling in for run CMC. So those are the guys you want to get on your bench this week for the Panthers. Well, there you go. And uh, DJ Moore, a little banged up here. And... Might as well move right into key injuries, Dave. And I only have a few of them. Maybe you have a few more than I do. I got DJ Moore. He's got an ankle injury. But the good news is, like you said, he has the bye week to heal up a little bit. We'll see and monitor his status. Josh Jacobs, he has a sprained ankle as well for the Raiders. He went out that game for a while. So he's questionable so far for next week. Daniel Jones, I believe it was a nasty hamstring injury he got against the Bengals. And... Uh, good old Colt McCoy came in to fill in. That was interesting seeing him again. Philip Lindsay, he banged up his knee running a lot of wildcat over there at Denver. And uh, he's definitely questionable coming into next week. But no major injuries that I saw unless uh, I'm missing something. I feel like I am. No, uh, those are all the ones I had as well. But then you have Will Fuller, who today was suspended for the rest of the year to, uh, due to a substance that he was taking, a legal substance. So he's up for the rest of the year. Uh, and then we did quite a few COVID cases this week as well. Is, is uh, that they, why Will Fuller scored 50 points against me? You know, uh, <laughs> or what, what was it, 39 or something in one of my leagues? My God, no wonder, dude. Uh, he, they, he should retract all of his points then. <laughs> 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 at least you weren't playing Tyree Kill. Whoever's playing Tyree Kill, I feel feel sorry for them this week. Luckily, I didn't play him in any of my leagues this week, thank God. Uh, but definitely, uh, Tyree Kill was a fantasy killer this week. So uh, he was the, definitely a manimal this week. He was possessed. So definitely, hopefully, you didn't play him this week. Uh, and then a couple other COVID uh, notes to note as well. Uh, we have James Conner. 
uh, who's on the COVID list right now, so he will not be playing this week. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, uh, as well, will, will be out this week. Uh, another major guy that's going to be out this week. And then Mark Ingram, as well, for the, and then for the Baltimore Ravens. And then Lamar Jackson, actually, which is a major one. Uh, hopefully he's back for their next game, but uh, it's not looking good right now. Hopefully he will be back, though. Uh, they're saying possibly J.K. Dobbins could be back now that they push the game back. Uh, make that a note of that as well. Uh, important note that they won't be playing until Wednesday now, not Tuesday. Uh, they moved it back to Wednesday. So a lot of shuffling of games, so make sure you're checking the times and dates of the games as well. Uh, they're moving the games on Sunday back to Mon- uh, back to. Monday and Tuesday, actually, next week are ready for some of the games, too, because there are the changes this week. So uh, there's going to be a lot of games shuffling around, so just make sure you're paying attention and setting your lineups before those games start. Well, there you go. Yeah, definitely set your lineups and uh, check those out. A couple coming off IR is uh, Miles Gaskin. Uh, He's going to be coming up here for the Dolphins. And Gardner Minshew, the mustache, you might see an appearance from him next week. So um, those are two of the guys I have coming off IR. Waiver wire time, Dave. Who are we picking up? All right. Well, we got quite a few out there this week. Uh, most of, of note, though, the most number one guy is going to be Colt McCoy. If you need a quarterback this week, uh, they're playing for the playoffs right now. Uh, Daniel Jones is probably going to be out for several weeks. Uh, so you can probably bench him or drop him probably because the playoffs are right around the corner. So you're not going to be able to play him in the playoffs. So Colt McCoy is going to be a good pickup this week. Uh, another one is going to be Devontae Booker. He's actually been playing very well. He's averaging 5.9 yards per carry this year. Uh, he, he's been getting more carries as well as the years went on. With Jacobs banged up, he might get even more carries. So he might be a nice guy to pick up. Uh, then Cam Akers actually had a nice game this last week. He posted 84 yards and a touchdown. Uh, 61 of those came on a long run, but he definitely was getting more of the carries uh, uh, over over Devery Henderson, uh, who had just 19 yards on his 10 carries. So uh, definitely a guy to pick up in case you need a running back. Another guy, too, old man Frank Gore. I think we talked about him last week as well. Uh, he had a very solid games this week as he got 21 touches and had 86 yards. So even though he's old, he's still putting up the numbers. So he's not a sexy play, but he definitely can help you win this week if you need a running back this week. Uh, and then another guy, Gus Edwards, who's filling in for J.K. Dobbins. Uh, and Mark Ingram, with them both on the COVID list, he's a great guy to pick up this week for the Wednesday game, or even for next week, possibly, if those guys aren't able to return. Uh, and another guy, too, Todd Gurley was a late scratch this past week, having a couple leagues, so I was kind of depressed to see that. Uh, but Brian Hill actually filled in for him, Ido Smith, uh, so both of those guys, you can take a look at one of those guys as pickups this week, if whoever's available. But Brian Hill's going to be the number one guy to pick up. And then Ido Smith, too, actually had a TD in garbage time. So uh, he might get you some fantasy points, too, as well this week if you do need him. And then Jordan Wilkins, actually, another player of note, J- Jonathan Taylor, our UW UW guy, uh, actually was placed on the COVID list as well. So Jordan Wilkins and Naeem Hines. Uh, I doubt Nine Himes is still out there, but if either one of them are out there, definitely you should pick those guys up. All right, my man. Liking what you're spitting there. Definitely a bunch of great players that I have on as well. Colt McCoy. Uh, well, not great player, but uh, desperate <laughs> player. If you're desperate, uh, Colt McCoy. I I liked him with Longhorns. The kid had a you know a lot of heart. You know he did. He's not an he's not an NFL quarterback though. I don't know why he's on an NFL roster. But he's uh, a great back. He's good for a couple of games, but you don't want him playing the whole year for you. I know he he eventually gets crushed too when somebody just smashes him and he usually gets hurt. So it's really uh, I feel sorry for the guy. Sometimes he's just so small out there. But uh, you know I like him. I like him. He's got a. Uh, uh, you know, he loves football. He lo- he's got a big heart. I bet he's a, a good coach someday. I uh, definitely have Devontae Booker. Uh, great call on that one. Josh Jacobs' ankle. And plus, he's getting a ton of carries, like you said, anyway. Great five point, what, nine yards per rush? That's that's really exactly. good, Dave. Great, great call on that. Yeah, Ito Smith, I have there. And um, uh, he actually got the uh, a little bit more points than uh, Hall did, so, or Hill, Brian Hill. So that was interesting. I'd run Hunter Renfro had nine targets there. And uh, Ola B.C. Johnson from the Vikings got seven targets. I thought that was interesting seeing him pop up on the old uh, stat sheet. Royce Freeman for the Lindsay injury. If Lindsay, Lindsay's out, he'd be a nice fill-in for your little uh, part-time back there shared with Melvin Gordon. Uh, and who knows, maybe they're, they're running the Wildcat next week too. So I have no idea what's going on with Denver. Uh, T.Y. Hilton had five targets in a TD. I mentioned him a long time ago, but might as well throw his name out there. And Mitch Trubisky, Dave. 
<laughs> and <laughs> poor Mitch. And I know uh, you've been nice to me so far, but uh, <laughs> that Mitch uh, had some garbage time with the Packers. And uh, even though he turned the ball over and caused a few Packer touchdowns, he also scored three of them himself. So he's got great matchups coming up against the Lions, the Texans, and the Jaguars. Okay? Just think about that in your playoffs here. Mitch with the Lions, the Texans, and the Jaguars. That would be one of those kind of like you pick him up, you put him on your bench, you get scared to uh, start Mitch, you start the other guy against like the Rams D or something, the Rams D stuffs the other guy, Mitch has a great week on your bench. So that's just pretty much how the fantasy playoffs goes, Dave. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the Packers, I mean, they're definitely going to win the NFC North here. I think, uh, yeah, congratulations to your Packers there. And uh, that's why I uh, tease the Packers with the Cleveland Browns this week. <laughs> Thanks. It was a great game to watch. It was fun seeing Trubisky throw those interceptions at crunch time. So it's always nice to have a few free points off of him. As much as he sucks, Foles is worse, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I was actually thinking the opposite when I was watching the game. I'm like, actually, I think Foles looked better. But then as the game went on, I think Mitch actually got some more confidence and actually played better as garbage time kind of kicked in. I mean, both quarterbacks have major problems, but Foles. For some reason, he had that really good year with Frank Reich there on the Eagles. And, Doug, of course, Doug Peterson was the coach, but he doesn't really prove to be a good coach anymore. I, I think that it was a, it was the system he was in. He was comfortable. Right now, he just doesn't have any rapport with the players. He doesn't throw where they're going to be. You know, he, he found that with the Eagles, but he needs a lot of maintenance to be good, and the Bears can't offer that with that terrible offensive line. So um, not a good situation for him. Uh, no, and I agree. I think Mitch actually is more athletic, and his scrambling ability actually is, is very nice too because when they rush the passer, he's able to scramble and pick up yards that way as well. Right, right, right. But being a fantasy podcast, if you're forced to start one of those guys, you're probably not that good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what's cool about the playoffs in some leagues, a bunch of other leagues are catching on now. We've been doing this for a while in our leagues, Dave, is uh, have the bottom six teams – play for the draft pick next year you know that's how it should be you know the the top six teams get six through 12 uh or seven through 12 and one through six goes to the the little tournament of the losers right the losers bracket so uh it, it keeps people involved it, it allows them to pick up waivers throughout the playoffs and uh you know it, it makes sure people don't tank right i i like exactly. that idea it's fun keeps everyone involved for sure. So if your league doesn't do that, suggest that to your commissioner. All right, man. Let's go to non-starters trending up for week 13, Dave. I'll start here. And I just like I said, Mitch, it, he's got a good matchup against the Lions. Horrible defense. Um, he's got to have at least two touchdowns here. I think his high floor this week for Mitch, he might throw a pick. He might throw a pick six. But I, I think you're going to get two touchdowns out of Mitch. And plus, two plus. So I like that with that with Mitch this week. Plus, you know they don't have a lot of running backs there with the Bears um, right now, so he's going to be throwing the ball. Uh, Gus Edwards versus Dallas is bad D. What's funny, Dave, is that we actually had a little argument about Gus Edwards as you called him a bust last week. I thought he would get at least ten points. They didn't even play the freaking game yet. <laughs> this was, <laughs> it was supposed to be for Thanksgiving that we were going to settle this, and we're sitting here on Monday night and. Uh, Gus Edwards still hasn't played the game. So apparently fantasy is adjusting and waiting for this game, isn't it, Dave? It is, yeah, exactly. And they said that they're still going to count the points for Wednesday for this week as well. So a lot of people are wondering about that. So they did confirm that for most leagues as well. Yeah, so I'm guessing waivers are not going to be open either. I've been trying to check into that. No one's given me an answer. But <laughs> I don't think waivers are going to open tomorrow. I think they're going to open on uh Possibly Thursday. I'm not sure how that works because there's a Thursday game. So maybe I think what they might do is open waivers and have the Ravens and the Steelers locked. You know, that's what I'm guessing. It's just a very strange thing to do. That makes sense. Taysom Hill is a non-starter trending up versus the Falcons D. Although they were good last week. They did show well against the Raiders, forced a bunch of turnovers. But it seems like their kryptonite has always been the Saints. Um, and, you know, Taysom Hill is going to get his yards. Naheem Hines 
versus the Texans run D. I like that one for sure. Hines is a great player. Um, and uh, he's uh, he's going to score some huge points this week against the Texans with Jonathan Taylor on COVID protocol. Like you said, man, Fuller out. Well, you got to go with Brandon Cooks because Brandon Cooks is going to be the main guy there. Maybe even Randall Cobb. But Brandon Randall Cobb's on IR, actually. Oh, is he? Oh, that's right. That's right. We. Kiki Kutute, actually, if I said the name right, I might have butchered that, but he's actually a guy you might want to pick up on waivers, too, as well, because he's going to be the number two there now uh, with Cabo and Fuller out. No doubt. Kaute, Kiki Kaute, we haven't said his name in a while. We used to last year a lot, and uh, he's going he's gonna to be another big receiver there, I think, for Deshaun Watson with that Fuller being out. Holy cow. Um, and I wonder if he's going to appeal it. So that's interesting. More to develop there for sure. But I doubt. I, it sounded like from his statement on Instagram that I read that uh, he's dead in the water. So <laughs> yeah, so he took it and he said it was prescribed by a doctor and he's prescribed him the wrong medication, uh, which is a little fishy. A little, so I definitely think he's not going to win that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's prescribed by a doctor. Heard that one a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Gaskin running back versus the Bengals run D. Um, he, he, Gaskin's coming back. I like it. I like him this week big time. Alexander Madison is actually going to get some carries, I think. Devin Cook is going to play. He got banged up a little bit, but the Vikings aren't going to overuse him because of that. You know, I think Alexander Madison is going to get probably 40% of the carries this week, 30 to 40 for sure. So against the Jaguars, really good matchup for Alexander Madison. Nelson Aguilar versus the horrible Jets D, and you could probably say any Raiders, any Raider this week is going to be good against the Jets. And LaVisca Chenault, wide receiver, versus the Vikings D on the other side, if he's healthy, he did play last week, and plus the mustache might be back throwing to him. If Glennon's throwing to him, forget it. If it's uh, anybody but Glennon, then I like LaVisca Chenault. Dave, who do you have for non-stars trending up? Sounds good. Uh, like you said, I do have a few Raiders. I do like uh, Renfro this week, and I do like Derek Carr to bounce back this week. He had a horrible game last week in a couple in one of my leagues that I started him in a two-quarterback league. Uh, I look for Derek Carr to have a good game this week. Uh, I, I like actually Frank Gore this week as well, who we just talked about. I think he could have a good game against the Raiders. They don't have a very good defense, so I like that matchup. I like Keelan Cole, actually, the other Jacksonville receiver I like against the poor Vikings defense. And I do also like Kirk Cousins this week against the Jaguars defense. They don't have a very good defense as well, so I like Kirk Cousins this week and Madison, like you were saying. And then uh, BB as well and possibly Johnson. If Thielen is out again, he's actually on the COVID list as well. So if he's out again, I definitely like those two guys to have a step up and actually have good games again. BB had a nice touchdown late, and he had like 60 or 70 yards receiving as well. So BB and Johnson are both good guys for the Vikings training up if, if Thielen is, is out again. Uh, and then I do also like uh, Fitzmagic again this week against the Bengals. Uh, if he's starting again for Tua, I, I do like him. Otherwise, I do like Tua if he's starting as well. So I like either one of those guys starting against the Bengals defense. Uh, I do like Hines or Wilkins against the Texans. So I think that's a great matchup as well. Uh, I do actually like Trubisky against the Lions. I think he's going to have a good week. And Mooney has been coming on for them as well, too. I do like the rookie receiver that they drafted. Uh, he's been coming on as, as of late. Uh, I have to say, but Colt McCoy against the Seahawks, poor pass defense. Uh, the Giants are playing well right now, three straight wins. So I do like McCoy this week. Uh, Cam Akers, I think he's trending up now, too. I think they're starting to give him more carries to the rookie. I think he's slowly overtaking Henderson and Brown. I don't think Brown ever was in the conversation since, like, week one. Uh, I do like Cam Noon against the Chargers this week. I think he's, he needs to play well to keep his job. So I definitely think he'll play well as, as well this week. Who are your busts? All right, my busts this week uh, are going to be uh, – Denver Broncos at the Chiefs. Uh, I do not like any of the Broncos this week, especially if they don't have a quarterback again. But they did say that one of their quarterbacks should be back this week. Uh, so even if they are, though, I don't like them against the Chiefs. So I'm definitely downgrading Juddy, Patrick, a receiver. Uh, Drew Locke, whoever the quarterback is, definitely downgrading them. The Chiefs have been playing well. Uh, I, I, I'm downgrading them definitely. Any Washington player, uh, Gibson had a monster week on Thanksgiving. Uh, but I don't see him doing that against a tough Steelers defense. Uh, Alex Smith has been playing well as well. Uh, no, not this week. 
Uh, not against the Steelers D. So I'm definitely downgrading him. Uh, Josh Allen, 49ers have actually been playing pretty good football in the past couple weeks. Uh, I'm definitely I'm downgrading Josh Allen a little bit this week. You can still start him for sure, but I'm definitely downgrading him. He's not going to have as great of a game as he has been the last couple weeks. Uh, so downgrading him this week against that tough defense. Uh, Falcons are downgrading them against the Saints. They didn't play well a couple weeks ago against the Saints. So Matt Ryan and Julio is still out. Uh, with the hammy, uh, definitely downgrading those guys and the, the running backs too. They have a great run defense for the Saints, so definitely who, Edo Smith or Brian Hill, who's ever starting this week. If you pick them up, I don't know if both starting them this week against a tough Saints D. Uh, the Lions, I'm definitely downgrading them. Matt Stafford against the Bears. The Bears do have a good defense still, even though the Packers shred them for 41 points. Uh, had to throw that in there. Sorry, Kia. Uh, hey, hey, <laughs> hey I, at least I beat you in fantasy this week, buddy. All right. Yes. All right. Like that team in your league. <laughs> I might have taken you out of the playoffs in your league, so we'll see. You have one more week. Let's get yeah. back in. <laughs> Hopefully. I still have some hope. Yeah. Uh, and then a couple other matchups. That, and then the Browns against the Titans. Titans do have a pretty good run D. So Chubb, I'm downgrading him and Hunt a little bit, but I think Mayfield could actually have a good uh, day against the Titans secondary, though. So we'll see about that matchup, though. But the Titans... I uh, have been giving up quite a few points to teams lately, but we'll see. I, 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 don't, I don't really like the matchup, though, for the Browns against the Titans against a good team. All right, man. Good stuff there. So I, I got Ito Smith and Brian Hill against the Saints run D. And I guess if Gurley's back, I don't know if he will be. I guess he's week to week, right? Then I would downgrade him too, Dave, against Saints yeah, D. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kenny and Drake uh, uh, versus a pissed off uh, Rams D. I don't like his matchup against the Rams. The Rams are great against the run and really the pass. Um, Wayne Gallman, which was my nasty sleeper last week with 17 points. I like it. Yeah, he did well. He did well, but he's downgraded this week because he's playing Seattle's run D. And you <laughs> saw Seattle just stuff Miles Sanders. Uh, Duke Johnson running back um, versus the pissed off Colts D. And, uh, that's definitely one um, that I, I wouldn't want to start. The Colts are uh, uh, just gave up a ton of points to Tennessee, and they're embarrassed. Um, going back to Wayne Gall, or uh, yeah, Wayne Gallman. So uh, who else do we call? We, we call Miles Sanders. That's it. Never mind. Going back to Miles Sanders, we actually had him as a bust this week, and it looks like he didn't do too much against Seattle, Dave. No, that was a good call too on both of our part. Heck yeah! And Ro- Roethlisberger, quarterback. After a short week versus Washington's pasty, believe it or not, Washington's pasty is the number one in yards. Uh, wow. I, I, it's weird. I, it, and I know their schedule is probably not that good. They're playing teams like the Giants, the Cowboys, you know. But at the same time, it's still somewhat impressive because they have played stronger teams. And just the fact that their average is still number one is pretty impressive. they got Chase Young there, and they're, they, they're really excited now. I, I really like their coach, Ron Rivera, and they're getting to the quarterback. I, I'm a little worried for Big Ben. I think they take care of the, the Ravens, and then they have that little letdown possibly against Washington. So look out for that. I agree with you on Alex Smith for sure against Pittsburgh's pass D, and um, I do worry about uh, uh, any Redskins on offense. Um, Ryan, Matt Ryan, I, I, I'm definitely uh, – downgrading him a little bit against the Saints pass D. He's probably all high and muddy, but his defense is the reason that they won that game last week. And Calvin Ridley against the Saints as well. So those are my busts, Dave. Nasty sleeper time, and I'll go first. Miles Gaskin running back for the Dolphins. He's going to be back. They really like him there, and he should be able to take big advantage of the Bengals. The Bengals are in shambles. The Bengals lost last week against the Giants. They're probably, you know, they're going to a – uh, a non-divisional foe on the road. Don't like the matchup for the Bengals. I think Miles Gaskin runs all over him, buddy. I who, like it. Who is your nasty sleeper? I'm going Kiki Kute. Uh, <laughs> quite a few times last year. I look for him to have a big game with all the receivers out this week for the Houston Texans. Watson still needs to throw some on the ball, and it's going to be to Kiki. There you go, man. Loving it. Oh, some good stuff, Dave. All right, my man. Well, that's all the time we have. Anything else for week 13 where people need to make the playoffs? No, good luck, everyone. Make sure you set your lineups. Make sure to pay attention to COVID. It's been wreaking havoc on a lot of rosters. So uh, make sure, like like I like myself this week, I didn't know Jonathan Taylor was on until the day before. So definitely make sure all your players are playing and make sure you get a healthy roster in there for the 
the, the stretch run for the playoffs. No doubt. Set your alarm for 15 minutes before the games and get your fantasy lineup cleaned up because lots could change from Saturday to Sunday this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please feel free to tweet us at the Oddsbreakers. Have a great rest of your week and go get some winners. <laughs>